hello, hello. Oh. <laughs> hello, hello, nice to meet you. Hello, hello, nice to meet you. Yoo-hoo. <laughs> and tweeting a bird. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hey, oh. welcome everybody. This is Robert Allen McCray. Welcome and wow. Hello, Robert. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. There we have Hassan. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hassan. Hello. Well, it is about body, mind, and spirit. Well, yes. <laughs> Hassan, <laughs> your volume is uh, way down. Oh, where's it going? Yay, guys. <laughs> good, good. But I can only hear you, Robert, about strength one. A string one. Oh my God. Yes. Can you hear me now? Uh, that's a little better. That's about strength three. <laughs> hey, Jeremy back. Hello, Jeremy. Hello. Awesome. Today's top is mind, happiness, mind, spirit, and body. And I'm there and a place where I'm trying to get these things to work. <laughs> My <laughs> body and soul. They don't work all the time, do they? I know, guys. This is this is this is on you today, but um yay! <laughs> Welcome, hey, Steven. Hey, Welcome hey, everybody. <laughs> it's good this news. Is this is the Happiness Lab, and I am welcoming Stephen L. Whiteley, <laughs> the famous <laughs> man of the hour, of the year. <laughs> and we are here today. And Jeremy, thank you for being here. Lanky, thank you for being here, for jumping yeah, on. I appreciate it. <laughs> we got a full house, and I'm uh, very happy to see that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we do. <laughs> and we get uh, the followers uh, as we speak. So it's a blessing, everyone, being here. It's happiness, body, mind, and spirit. So I'm going to start with you, Jeremy, today. What do you think about that? What is what? What comes up for you with that one? Well, the the spirit part is the part that interested me. You know, we um, I think we have happiness at our core, but we forget about that. And uh, I think if we peel off some of the layers. Um, we find that 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 is at our core. It should be, and you know, we we can just laugh about it. You know, um, it, even if it's just a five minute laughter break, we we all need stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, why not a five minute laughter break? Uh, you know, <laughs> we've heard of laughter breaks, we've heard of coffee hour, breaks, we've stopping. heard of dessert breaks, we've heard of all kinds of breaks, and even yeah. squealing breaks. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could have a laughing breaks? break. Ecological breaks. <laughs> Why not laughter breaks? Good so idea, Link, Jeremy. Jeremy, that is that is profound. And and we do. If we would actually take on an hour and five minutes out of that hour, think of something funny, something exciting, right. something that we would rejuvenate our our bodies with, and it can be as simple as being laughter. You're right. Wow. Excellent. Link, what funny do you joke. think? Yeah. Yeah. I my opinion is we need to be unit in unit with our soul, body, spirit, and we have joy and happiness all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Mind, heart, body, and soul. Yeah. Mind, yes, yes, body, yes. and soul. <laughs> So, Mr. Dr. Stephen L. Wiley, what is your description of this one today? Okay. <laughs> I'm going up in the world. <laughs> you are. <laughs> so, there we go. 
if we think about our way of living and who we are, then if we are mind, heart, body, and soul, is there anything missing from that? Are we anything more than that? I would say, yeah. I can't think of anything else. Can you guys? Well, we're we're more than the sum of our parts, though. I mean, that oh, that's yeah. not just uh, cliche. I think there are some other things there, but some of them might what be. What other uh, parts would you say are there? Well, there there might be some negativity that needs to be swept out of there. I'm I'm not sure if that's uh, really covered by those four the categories. Mind, so. The mind has two sides, right? The positivity and the negative. Yeah. But what about yeah? What about the garbage? The, so the garbage is just are. kind of out there in the ether of the brain. You know, it's not really <laughs> part of the mind. It's it's a helium balloon way up here. <laughs> I think I think you know, what you're talking about is the content of the mind. Ah, uh, okay. Would would you can you buy into that? Ah, uh, possibly. Okay, okay, because the the mind can hold the good, the bad, the ugly. True. And the beautiful. <laughs> Even more true. <laughs> yes. So, okay. So now that we've agreed on that, are there any other things that are missing from there that are a part of us, or is does that describe the whole of each person? What's it? Well, uh, I, good I question. Can't describe you got one. you. Yeah, I mean, we stumped everybody here. <laughs> 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 there are other things. For, for example, the, there's music. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Where, where yeah. is that? It, so if we can agree then that everything about the mind, but it's you know, it, it's kind of out there too. So I. You know, and and it, and if you sing it, the music comes out of you, and then it's but it's still part of you. So I, I don't know. I I, no, I is think it music coming music from my might be body, something my that is my uh, body or my soul. soul. Well, music music resides in the soul, though, too. That that's uh, you know that's a big part of my soul, for example. But yes. but if I produce music, it, it goes out. Yes. And, is it still a part of me or is it part of someone else or is it somewhere in between? Well, what that means to me is that is the sharing of us. Right. So when, it's, when it's in, a, in us, it is us. But when we share it, it becomes more and more of more people. True. Which I love, okay. like laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's go down one step deeper now. If we can agree, mostly, <laughs> that we are mind, heart, body, and soul, then let's talk about a little bit about what each is. So I'm going to start with body because that's the most clear. So we can see that we have a body, we can feel that we have a body, and if we give it a whack, we can hear it. <laughs> that's true and feel it <laughs> or, or not feel it, depending on how cold or warm it is right yeah, yeah 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 so it's pretty clear that there's a body here and that there's a body in each one of you and everybody yeah. else we mm -hmm. all have a body yes right okay now in this body there are some more debatable things but i don't think anybody would debate that there is a heart and that yes. the heart we're going to call emotions. Can we do that? If sure. we think of the heart as emotions. Okay. And then we think of the mind as thoughts. Mm. Can, okay. Is that a fair call? That's a fair call. Mind thoughts, heart Mind thoughts, emotions. Heart feelings, body, corporal, right. uh, entity. Right. And what about soul? <laughs> well, that's in there too. Yeah. Tell me who you are, heart. 
Well, we it, it's soul. out there too, though. I mean, the, the soul is uh, metaphysical. That That's one of the, um, the complexity of that. The attributes of it. Is, uh, exactly. very deep. It's much less definable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my take on it. I believe that the soul of everybody is love. Happy love. Okay. And that and, and I, it's not just the feeling of love. But it's loving who we are, what we do, everything and everybody around us, what we give, what we receive. Mm -hmm. So the soul, in my view, is both an energy and a guide. So it's the energy of love and happiness, and it's a guide that takes us on a journey that is our purpose and also can be a steering wheel for us. You know, making me feel less good, do less of that. Making me feel more good, do more of that. And so I think it kind of works like this. We make a decision in the mind. And that generates a feeling in the heart. Well, you have to, you have to take it from the mind and transfer it to the heart. That's right. Because to, thought drives feelings. Okay. So then it becomes a feeling of either action or inaction, belief or non-belief. And so we either move the body in a unhappy, unloving way. Mm, interesting. And we bury our soul by another layer. Mm -hmm. Or we release the deep love and happiness within our soul and we spring into productive action. <laughs> so the productive action, though, sometimes springing into it has a whole bunch of layers around it that are, would spring up. So what kind go of layers through are those? we talking about? What's that? What kind of layers are those layers? Well, those are layers from the hurt past. Ah, that's it. You got me. Okay. So it is about oh, the gosh. it's the layers about the past. So those if you would just recognize that those are just layers from the past, recognize that the thought touches the heart of that expression or that feeling of emotion will drive you to creating what you want in your life or what the the, the, the passion that you're looking for. The passion maybe it's love, maybe it's happiness. Yes, yes. Wow. <laughs> there people who have other purposes. Hey, like I know people whose purpose is organization. I know a person whose purpose is discipline. So it, it, but nevertheless, whatever they're doing makes them feel good. <laughs> so yeah. the question at the end of the day, I think, is because at the end of the day, we become no longer a body. We become no longer a heart. I think we still remain a mind and a soul, but nobody really knows. So my feeling is that we do remain a mind and a soul. So what is most important to my way of thinking is aligning the mind with the uh purest expression of the soul so that when we become just mind and soul we are in harmony not in conflict we are feeling satisfied not regretful and that we are happy about what we have given to the earth So, mm -hmm. okay. when we then consider that we're mind, heart, body, and soul, that means we are not all our stuff. 
<laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> so it's not about so the we're not stuff. these bad people out there. <laughs> no. It's no, not it's about not us about being mad, mad out, out there, there. And it's not about <laughs> It, it's not about it's not about my pad. <laughs> no, it's not about my pad. It's not about you know making a difference. All fun to have, all okay. nice. You, you can't take that stuff with you. You know that's. Remember? <laughs> oh, I thought I could. <laughs> Can't take your stuff with you. No, you can't. That's why we should get rid of it now. Get rid Which of stuff it. Which stuff can you take with you, though? Well, you you take your soul with you. You take, take your, soul your soul with, with you. you. In fact, you you need to stay plugged into it. I, you know, the the interesting thing you talked about the uh, Stephen, you talked about the the mind dictating to the heart. I think sometimes the heart dictates to the mind. And I, I think you're right. You know, I. You know, tell me if I'm wrong, but I, I think sometimes what our actions reflect is the compassion of the heart that the mind might lack. And our, our you know, our conscience within our soul tells us to do something out of the good of our hearts. And, you know, if, if the mind were doing it, the mind is going to say, no, I can do something, you know, something more selfish or something more ridiculous or whatever. But, um you know, but sometimes we want to do something meaningful. And I, I think sometimes the heart tells the mind what to do um, and maybe keeps the mind in check a little bit. I think you're right, but I'm going to say something about the mind that's maybe how we're thinking of it a little differently. Because what I'm hearing is the brain and the heart. And to me, the mind is bigger than the brain. To me, the mind comes all through the brain all through the body and it has centers in the heart and in the gut and so that's why i use the word the mind because it's more in my mind than the brain <laughs> so if the mind is the framework okay. of thought throughout the entire body system and to be honest outside the body as well but if we have that then um i'm well aware of the heart math uh, institute and their work and the power the neural power of the heart and there is also neural power in the gut. Mm. So who's to say whether the brain power, the heart power, or the gut power is more powerful? And to me, it's a bit of a moot point. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I think really matters is that we live the loving life of happy purposefulness. <laughs> because I can't think of any other way that at the end of our days we will feel satisfied and at one with ourself can you and I think that's where we want to be right when, at the end of our days we want to be loving us, loving what we've done, loving what we've created, loving what we're leaving behind and loving those around us. So the only way I can see to do that is to be a productive person who is uh, operating from a power of love and happiness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, 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 I can say yes to yeah. that, okay? It's not hard for me to say yes, okay? But it is, it is like for a lot of us in society have to uh, create an income. So we have yeah. to move through some things to get there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or we've got relationships we want in our life. Yeah. So yeah, we've yeah. got all of these other forces. So those, those are good us. though, because... Do all of those things work better? Like I, I fully am cognizant of this because I too have this. <laughs> right? 
I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know. <laughs> well, but what is this? <laughs> this is the point, though. Is that when when we go at yeah. those other requirements yeah, exactly. from a standpoint this? of happiness and love, <laughs> then doesn't everything work better out there too? Aren't we more productive? Aren't we more creative? Because we're operating from a higher level of being. Yeah. And aren't we more collaborative of and course, more attractive? We can, more metaphysical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> more. <laughs> yeah. That's not just the body. Yeah. Oh, no, we're back to no, the soul. Not again. just the exactly. Body. Exactly. There is more to us than the body. <laughs> I, I love how you made such a big deal of, about um, yeah. the the heart containing love. I think we uh, sometimes we get we close up and we um, have the capacity to love, and we fail to do that. And I, I think that's a great reminder that you know we need to uh, stay in touch with that. And if we feel that we're closing up mm -hmm. love that we be, should be showing to others in some way, we need to open our hearts and release that. <laughs> yes so that i everything that is you know it has been said that everything is either love or a cry for love and i can subscribe to that because i think when people are using negativity they're just following an old pattern. They're trying to avoid action and they're trying to get things that are really going, uh, like it's the something for nothing kind of framework. That is what negativity is about, is to try to get more with less. Whereas in positivity, you need to produce more because, you know, if you think about it, it's much easier and faster to break something than it is to build something. So yeah. that's the difference between negativity and positivity. But the seductive nature of negativity is the instantaneous gratification because when you yell at somebody, they will stop what they're doing. But if you take the time and you create some rapport with them and find out what they're about and then make a nice suggestion, then they're probably going to react in a much better way and you're going to end up with a relationship with them. So it's this desire for instantaneous gratification that drives the negativity and negativity always has negative side effects. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and how much you more use, you got more, 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 and you are surprised, why? <laughs> Why is it that uh, positivity people uh, uh, um, stir up so much negativity? Like, like we're seeing in the comments yeah. today. Yeah. For, for goodness sakes, who, who, who would uh, do such a thing? This well, is about that, happiness. That's this right. About laughter. You're, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the wrong place. <laughs> But that's true. We should uh, we should um, delete those comments, though. I you know I hate to do this yeah, on the yeah, record, yeah, yeah. but it, it, exactly you know, we, we're done. Let's we'd... deal with those, please. <laughs> God, I think like you know it. There, there's a um, there's a recognized uh, idea that we all have a negative bias. And this comes from the beginnings of humanity, like 100,000 years ago, when we were all going to get uh, eaten by a tiger if we weren't careful. So, so we were always on the lookout for trouble. Always on the lookout for trouble. 
And uh, that has led over generations to generations to generations to the negativity bias. So it is easier to be negative. There's no doubt about it. You don't have to think anything up. You just have to say no. And not only no, but hell no. <laughs> <laughs> So, wow. but if you, if you say yes, then it usually takes some action. <laughs> I, you know, all, all it takes, I, I think, is to say, uh, you know, tell me a funny joke. You know, anything to get someone yeah. to laugh, it, it pulls you yeah. out of that negativity. And, and then you're, uh, you know, it just completely uh, flips you to the other side. And then you're thinking positive, happy thoughts. Yeah, yeah always. Exactly. Always. <laughs> I'm in for and, that. That's what yeah. I'm all about. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, that's my first block. <laughs> it won't be your last, though. And it won't, probably won't be my last. <laughs> <laughs> the audience is growing. <laughs> growing. I am glad. I am so, uh, you know, actually, the uh, I'm actually really... Um, you know, Megan, I'm really thankful for you. Thank you for being here today. You are truly a blessing. And you made me figure out something. That's a new thing. What happened with that circumstances? It turned you in, it, it made it, yes, there was an uncomfortableness. And then that uncomfortableness turned out to be uh, something that I, I got to learn out yeah. of the situation. Exactly. Because I would have never learned it. Yeah. That is pointing out to us our action. So when there's uncomfortableness, it's time to grow. It's time to learn. It's time to take a new action. Yeah. So uncomfortableness is your friend. And it was uncomfortable. It was. In that moment, it was uncomfortable <laughs> because there was value given and I didn't know how to handle that situation in that split moment. But yeah, what, yeah, yeah. yeah, so what turned around for me was that, okay, how do I deal with this and keep everybody comfortable? And it was an interesting, um, it was an interesting dialogue I was having under my, in my sub, in my mind. So, yeah, yeah. so what can I do to tr create a different kind of outcome? How can I create a moment of, <laughs> of laughing for a second? And, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, did it work? It, it learned. I learned something. I learned yeah. how to handle it. Exactly. So that's what mistakes are for, right? Uh, for learning a way, new ways of doing things and of being. Mm -hmm. so what I mean, is learning. <laughs> yeah, I had to move through the discomfort. <laughs> I've made a mistake. Thank you. I'm going to learn from this. <laughs> I should have known because I would have stopped it in the beginning, but didn't know how to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I beat myself up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody else's unhappiness is not a threat to my happiness. There you go. <laughs> so, Jeremy, thank you for that lesson. <laughs> I, I was trying to type help in the comments, and I had already <laughs> done something else, so it wouldn't have <laughs> So I, I figured something out, too. I, I need to, you know, not type half a comment and then not click submit. There you go. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I did that the other day, too. <laughs> I typed the whole comment and didn't submit. Yep. <laughs> 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 so the, the interesting part that you're saying is that the, you had to drop in. And when we were talking, I was like, OK, I have to go back to them thoughts. My thoughts are thinking a whole bunch of craziness. And then it came down and drop it into the heart part and project it from the heart. And then you can it, the solution really actually comes from there. That's a great idea. I like it, that. I mean, it really <laughs> felt like it came from there, even though I, I, and it came from who know it came from a place I would have never expected, like Megan. So it's a simple. I mean, those are simple nuggets. Like Megan. That we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you guys are awesome, and thank you for that. My, I learned a lot, and I didn't do much on this lab. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. <laughs>
<laughs> I think you did more than you thought you did. Exactly. <laughs> well, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, the, <laughs> okay. right. so uh, does anybody have any questions about the um, mind, heart, body, and soul, or any ideas, or uh, whatever? Yeah. <laughs> So Megan is a defender of happiness. I like that. Yeah. I so like that. He, I, she's I assume the, to be a defender of happiness, you have to be also a projector of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's an interesting way of looking at it, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you have to project out from the heart the love and the, and the appreciation. And that exactly. sometimes isn't as, you know, coming through a situation, you think that these are happy blabs and they turn out to be something different than that. You're going, <laughs> how do you raise your vibration to, to be happy? And, that, and we need to laugh through out the so, smallest of, of, of circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know your, well, you, you can't just pretend to be happy, although no. if you do that, it can make you happy. But if you're going to defend happiness, you, you have to really believe it deep down, don't you? You have to believe it in your heart, in your soul, in your mind. I think it crosses may, maybe in your body, maybe not. I, I don't. Mm -hmm. Does the body reflect? Does the body huh? reflect happiness other than the, the act of laughter? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it does. How? How? Happiness is health. Okay. Absolutely. I'm happiness is energy. I'm inclined to agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Happiness is health. Happiness is energy. Absolutely it does. Happiness so it's, it, it's, so it's, it, it's essential that we keep a components of these happiness. It's a natural state is what right. Megan is saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a See? natural state to be in. That negative state is not really a state of, because it's, it's causing disharmony in our bodies. Yes. When you so, have peace of mind, it's a very happy thing. And so that's good. But when I think about defending happiness, the object of this sentence is happiness. So you're actually defending that thing that's called happiness. Mm. But that thing that's called happiness lives in me. It lives in you. It's not something out there. Although I suppose it can be shared in an environment. Mm -hmm. But what that makes me think of is that the most important way to defend happiness is to keep me happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I fully support that. <laughs> and it's much more important because you have yes. energy yes, that's the source of eternal energy happy, right is me <laughs> and no <laughs> matter what it is <laughs> so if i'm defending happiness i have to have it in me and keep it alive in me so yeah. that it can go out <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> hey what, what about uh do you see the question from eileen up above i think she may have left the room but she asked uh Norm, the difference between joy and happiness. I yeah. have some, thought some about this, yes. And um, what I think about this, you know, there are things like joy, there are things like happiness. Some people talk about love in there, and some people uh, have other words that they, they like to use, like bliss. To me, the discussion about the difference between them, which you prefer, which you don't, is sort of like um, a quibble between the emotionally wealthy. Mm. So if, you know, if you really want to compare, is my happiness bigger than your joy or is your joy bigger than my happiness? We could argue about that, but I don't really see the point because what that's doing is comparing. And for somebody who doesn't have it, then I think happiness is a very attractive idea. So I could, um, I could 
accept an argument that maybe one is higher than another and maybe one is more inclusive than another or more meaningful than another. At the same time, I would say that it's fairly subjective. And at the same time, I would say it's fairly silly argument. <laughs> Between joy and happy, happiness. Yeah, like what, what is the use of this argument? What is the, but the, doesn't argument. doesn't happiness reside somewhere within the circle of joy if there is such a thing? Because I, I think there's, you know, you could be quietly joyful and maybe smile mm. and laugh about something later if it becomes funny. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I do that all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I call it joy. Sometimes I call it bliss. <laughs> <laughs> this is the point, right? Words are very subjective. Like we have dictionary meanings of them, mm -hmm. but everybody has in their mind a different idea of what each word is. Like if I say chair and you think about a chair, then each one of us will be picturing a different chair True. that we associate with that word chair. Mm. None of us will have the same chair. So if I want to know what you mean when you say chair, I got to ask you about your chair. So what is your chair, Jeremy? Well, my chair is uh, the recliner in our living room. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, my chair is my grandfather's chair because nobody else could sit in that chair. <laughs> <laughs> so there's two different chairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Except your grandfather, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, but uh, every word is like that. So, like, you had joy, and you had a circle of joy, and you had happiness in it. But I don't have that. <laughs> and that's okay. Sure. I don't mind. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe neither one has boundaries. You know, that's maybe, exactly I, what I'm thinking. I, I think, I think Stephen, I think you're on to something with, you know, I, you're talking more abundantly than I have been, and I, I'm realizing... <laughs> Maybe the boundaries of the drawing, I need to take an eraser and uh, uh, yes. um, kind of blow boundaries. those uh, boundaries out uh, a little further into the cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the only norming I've done on happiness is my definition of happiness. And I believe, for those that haven't heard it yet, that happiness is about harmony and harmony with three things. So you want to have a harmony inside yourself. Harmony in your environment and harmony in your purpose for living. So what that does is it stops the fighting and builds the love inside, makes us thankful and grateful for everybody and everything around us, and then gets us acting very purposefully every day. And so to me, this encompasses the whole thing. If you're doing that, there's nothing left to be unhappy about. Right. Because, you know, the source of most of our unhappiness is something from the past that is uh, unresolved. Uh, but if you're loving yourself, you have that all resolved. Mm -hmm. And then there's something about us now that uh, we don't like the way we either behave or look. But if you're loving yourself, you don't have that anymore. <laughs> and then <laughs> there's some kind of conflict with something or somebody around us. But if you have already... Uh, are thankful and grateful for everything and everybody around you because it's either uh, it's either happy or it's a lesson to learn. <laughs> so they're both good things. You know, so, if, if I have learned learn so if, much from the unhappiness around me. <laughs> if we wish those people happiness, does that help resolve those differences? What do you think? Absolutely. Uh, if you operate in harmony with them. So, like, you know, when they point the finger at you, you just say, thank you. <laughs> Dang, that's harder said than done. That is <laughs> I, I mean, no, I, I, I really like what Megan done. says. <laughs> yeah. Said done. But it doesn't take very long to get into the habit of doing it. And it doesn't take very long for them to realize that it's going to happen. So there ain't much sense in doing it anymore. <laughs> Yes. Megan was saying <laughs> happiness has more levity. Also, also joy is more like bliss. 
It has a ma uh, mass in the body. Just it was just her experience that she is having. Hmm. So she's saying that joy has more mass in the body. Oh, how interesting! Yeah, yeah. So in another way, is to get rid of those fixed ideas of everything. Step back from the definitions are only useful to the degree that they're useful. Now, I know that sounds a bit nonsensical. <laughs> it's a little circular. But, but, but to take it one step further, if a definition isn't useful to me, then I'm going to let it go because I don't want to be expansive. Yeah. Mm. But sometimes you need definition so that you can have a, a, a useful conversation. So, you know, you, you both need to know what you're talking about. And that's one of the things that we're going through right now, right? Because Megan is explaining her way of thinking about it. Jeremy was explaining his way of thinking about it. I was explaining my way of thinking about it. And so we're coming into a common sort of understanding here. And maybe we'll resolve something through this and maybe we won't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and Megan, and Megan's right about this. We all, we only, we only, we only have words. Yeah. So we're, we've got to use them. And, you know, and when she was saying, I do love them. She loves them too, because it's like, it's finding the right word to express yourself in the best way about this topic called happiness. Exactly. There's many and if you... different ways yeah. that somebody put, it, it expands our limitations. These blabs expand the limitation yeah. and, and if you've been hanging mind. around me for a while you'll know i'm all about words <laughs> i'm very picky about words <laughs> I think words are very powerful <laughs> yes they are yeah yeah yeah, yes. so, yeah no I'm, I'm all over that but at the same time it's important to know when the words are useful and when they're not useful, and when they're not useful, then just to let it go. Mm -hmm. that, that's my thinking on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, well, what a great day we're having. The simplicity of thinking stumps us. <laughs> <laughs> so we still have to keep evoking more thought out of you to, add, to get more of those words to form our own ways of happiness because you spent seven years devoted to this and transforming your life through the, the 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 words through the knowledge of words and words to us is big because we're we're you're, it's it's a blessing to hear you and we're blissed out in joy and happiness just to be thankful that we have an idea of how to communicate because I don't most of the world hasn't been able to communicate to this at this day. No, 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 I no, mean, no. <laughs> the, monk, the monks maybe in in, in Tibet maybe have have, <laughs> in, have an influence oh. they do it all day long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk about that actually on Monday in the power of happiness. <laughs> about you know what kind of words and what kind of words really have power and what kind of words do we just think have are you frozen there, Robert? I think Robert's frozen. He is. We he's froze frozen him with our words. I think we're of <laughs> he, he was laughing while he froze. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> very good. Very good. Yeah, so uh, we got to love our words and we got to love our ability to use words. And um, through words, ideas are exchanged and ideas are really important. And I love the ideas of, you know, living the happy, purposeful way. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, you know, if anybody wants to get themselves free of all of their negativity or they want to connect with their purpose or they want to really learn uh, what happiness is all about and how to get it more of it then here's my book happiness works get yours here you can get it on all the uh, online sellers it's a winner and then uh, 
If you want some coaching, I'm happy to do that uh, because that's one of my favorite things to do is to help people in that way. <laughs> and uh, you can connect with us online. I think Robert put in here uh, how to connect with us. Yeah, right at the beginning he did yeah. there. And you can also connect with us on uh, Facebook. We got a great Facebook page going there. I'm going to put the link in for that. I think we lost our Robert. Uh, he's lost in bliss, I think. It's he's, not <laughs> he's laughing too hard. He's laughing too hard for the moment. And, uh, just uh, fell off the air. I didn't know that could happen. He's on the air. He's off the air. He's on the air. He's off the air. <laughs> that was me yesterday. <laughs> yes, yes. Just in, in another dimension. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was it's, trying to get on. They could hear me, and then they couldn't hear me, and they could hear me, and then they couldn't hear yes. me. There he is. Welcome back, Robert. Kind of went on it. Yeah, oh, good, good, times. good. Yes. Oh, he's on, he's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. We're back. <laughs> That's why you always have a co-host. You <laughs> <laughs> have problems. <laughs> there you go. That's true. It hey, does uh, work. Julian, with a question from Julian. That's okay. Uh, so Julian, can I always be that happy? Yes, I can be this happy, but I'm not always this happy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not faking it. I am having so much fun helping people out. That's what I really love. But am I like this all day? No. But I'm never unhappy. That's the point. Is the lowest I ever go is optimism. Because I'm always believing that I can be better and my world can be better and I can take some action to make it so. So that always Ooh. gives me the positive side of emotions because I'm willing to take action. <laughs> mm. It's very good to take action. <laughs> yes. That's the simplest form to get. Yeah, it wasn't always that way. You know, I used to procrastinate and I used to hide from important things and stuff like that, but it didn't make me feel good. Wasn't wasn't much personal growth in that. <laughs> Wait, did that make you unhappy? I mean, is that part? How, you know, how you, yeah. Julian's asking how how you changed. How you changed that? Yeah, yeah. So what changed me was me. I changed me. So I learned uh, mind changing skills, thought changing skills, uh, and I uh, used them. So uh, mostly use uh, NLP and meditation. Uh, are my uh, primary skills, and I just keep working at it day by day by day. <laughs> <laughs> and I help other people do the same. It is fun, fun, fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All of us can learn to be happy and productive. It's just a question of letting go. The bigger part is letting go of all of the negativity. That's the biggest part. Uh, the smaller part is learning new skills. There's a few new skills that are really handy, and I still uh, I'm working on developing some new skills. But the biggest part is letting go of all the troubles. <laughs> hmm. What is the biggest challenge to being happy? Is learning to shift our own way of being. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> well said, mate. It's all, it all starts in thinking because thinking drives feeling and feeling drives action. So happiness is health. I've been now on this journey of happiness for seven and a half years with no unhappiness. And in that seven and a half years, I think I've had one cold for two days. Wow. And other than that, I've been vibrantly healthy. I've been fit, having fun, productive. <laughs> what, what's, what's there not to like about it? <laughs> <laughs> so it's healthy in a holistic sense. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it is healthy in a holistic sense. Like, you know, on this journey, I used to drink way too much booze and I stopped doing that. And I, like, 
I still like having a glass of wine, a beer, a drink. I, you know, I'll do that whenever the time feels right, which isn't very often, but when it does, I like it. I don't drink very much coffee, but there's a couple of social things I go to where everybody drinks coffee and I drink a coffee with them and I enjoy it. But most days I drink a ton of water. I eat a ton of vegetables and I, I, I eat healthy. I act healthy. I do exercise. I sleep well. I develop positive relationships. <laughs> coffee makes me. <laughs> I, I love coffee. I, I just do. I can't, uh, I, I can't deny it. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. If you want to love coffee, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but what I found was when I drank, like there was a time many, many years ago when I started drinking a lot of coffee and it made me feel awful. So I stopped doing that. <laughs> so that was one of those great things that happened, you know, you're just doing and doing and doing. And then you go, wow, this is awful. I ain't doing that no more. <laughs> you don't need anything to be happy. <laughs> no. I try well, without you... coffee and I can't live without coffee. It don't make me much more happier. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Julian. <laughs> I love laughing. If you ain't laughing, you ain't living. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So what makes me laugh so much on the lab is that I'm doing my work. And I just love doing my purpose, right? Which is helping me create a happier and more successful world. And so <laughs> it's really great fun uh, doing what I'm doing. And if I can help anybody else along the way, then that's even more fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, so yes, let me yes. tell us uh, from your perspective, how do you work between your mind, heart, body, and soul? I am harmony with, with all. Ah, nice. It was a long time, but <laughs> I choose to make this decision because it's much better. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And How long did it take you? I think so. It was a long time ago, but it's take one and a half year until I am went through really and yeah, I am yeah, happy. So it took me about seven years. It was a, <laughs> <laughs> it takes, I, I decided for one moment to other because it's everything collapsed on me and I, I haven't other choice if I, maybe it's over and I go back where we belong or I try different, something different. <laughs> ah, yes, very good. And, <laughs> and that has changed everything. <laughs> I decided, you? okay, you put yourself down, you can take yourself up and high, high, That's high. Right. If we can create a problem, we can solve. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and nobody can resolve just you. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you are the food you, you, are the, you are the source of your trouble and your triumph. Yes, yes, and yes. So if you take control of your own way of living, then all is well. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And when I, I decided to live my life, not other people's life, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's the other part right because when you're trying to get in everybody else's life then you're living the life of conflict Ooh. yes always <laughs> yes. The life of conflict is no fun and no success really? <laughs> no no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unhappy was the life of conflict ah. <laughs> so the life of conflict brought you on happiness that's right. Yes. <laughs> so then to get happy again, I needed to. That's about all I'm going to get in here today, guys, because I'm not sure what's up. 
<laughs> now, yeah. And how about you, Jeremy? How is mind, heart, body, and soul working for you? Well, I think for me, it's uh, it's linked to uh, positivity. And I think, you know, I had a, a happiness laughter advocate who taught me how important happiness was and kept telling me, you're too serious. You've got to laugh every once in a while. And <laughs> once, once she got me laughing and started teaching me laughter yoga and things like that, I, I oh, just, yeah. you know, I feel like a completely different person now. Awesome. And, uh, yeah. Was that person your wife or your significant other? No, it's uh, um, uh, Elaine Nieberding taught me the um, importance of laughter. She's here on Blab and also on Google Plus. Um, she she hosts a couple shows, but she she teaches people laughter yoga and does like uh, on International Laughter Day we did a laughter show. Um, oh, nice! So I, I was one of the laughers. You know, it, it's one thing to to laugh you know, uh, to something that's funny, but it, it's, uh, you know, I'm not used to this spontaneous laughter where you just laugh for the sake of laughing and being like happy. Laughter and, yoga, you mean. But I, after discovering that I could do that, I realized, well, I can do that whenever I want. As yeah. long as I'm, <laughs> it's an appropriate place. You get the benefits whether it's so. fake or not. Right. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that was real, that's really awesome. And no really matter awesome. what the people Yes, about that. <laughs> you love that. Excellent. And since you've been happier, then how has your health been? My health has been much better. It, it just, it's a complete, um, I don't know, it's part of a complete health transformation I've been doing with other issues too, just being more active, you know, running more and things like that. And it just, uh, you know, I, I feel much uh, stronger, you know, and, um, you know, b bad things happen. You just you laugh them off. You know, um, exactly. You have to. Life's too short not to. Sometimes. <laughs> well, why not? Yeah. <laughs> what is the good of going down into the pit when something happens that you don't like? Uh, How does it? Help? So true. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I spend a lot of time in the pit. And not just reading the pit and the pendulum. I mean, really in the pit, and it, it's not fun down there. <laughs> no, it's easy to get there. It sure is hard to live there. <laughs> it is. It is. You're right. <laughs> it, 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 it is hard to live there. And feel great. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. We break the cycle by finding higher truth, uh, Julian. That there's no truth in personal negativity because humans have unlimited potential. No limit to human potential has ever been found. And that's why you are always breaking new records and finding out new things and break crossing new frontiers and things like that, because there is no limit to human uh, potential. And that is true of every one of us not just the people that make the record books. So express your potential. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 ah. We get, we've got oh, so many oh, lids yeah. on us, and we've got our, so many layers on the onion that we have to peel back. If you decide that, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on you. <laughs> Yeah, so I have a question about the onion. Make it you know, okay. if, you're, if you're slicing or dicing an onion, you know how it makes us cry. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to laugh instead? I can, never tried that. Laugh and offset the cry. Yes. If you can do it with other one things, thing I have with... noticed. One thing, since I've been really happy, I've noticed I've that. noticed that I don't cry near as much when I cut onions. Many times, not at all. <laughs> yes. There's a good point there on truth. That truth is subjective. And truth, there's two kinds of truth, in my opinion. One kind of truth is personal truth, and it's just like opinion. And I don't think it's really worth a lot unless you find it's worth a lot to you. And the second part of truth is what I call universal truth. And I was always looking for universal truth. But in the beginning, the only way I could figure out to, to know if something was universal truth 
was to ask enough people and to see if you could finally gain, uh, you know, uh, significant enough uh, mm-hmm. statistic that you could say, well, that's probably true for everyone. But I figured out a new way uh, that, in fact, that's not true. I didn't figure it out. It was revealed to me. <laughs> so a new way was revealed to me. And uh, that is this. If you have an idea and you want to know if it's true or not, then imagine that everybody in the world is doing that thing all the time. If that's sustainable, it's true. If it's not sustainable, it's not true. So I'll give you an example. If everybody's hating everybody all the time, will that be sustainable? No. I don't think so. No. no. <laughs> I would hope not. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, so to me, hating is untrue. And take the flip side. If everybody's loving everybody all the time, would that be sustainable? Actually, yes. Yes. <laughs> the love yeah, is yeah. true. Stay, stay in that state. That's the, that's the challenge. You know, we, we fall out of that state. That's the problem, I think. But yeah, yeah if people well, can right. stay there, yes. So when course. we're in there, we're living in truth. When we're not in there, we're living in untruth. And so which serves us better? Living in truth, I would suggest. So what do we do about that when we're bouncing back and forth? What we do about that is build a practice of living more and more in truth. So every time that I feel less than ideal, I step back, I go, oh, what happened there? Hmm, that's interesting. And uh, I uh, decide what it is in me, like I search inside myself and I pick whatever it is and I heal it. I become more because of that. And then I go back and I've got a new way of doing things in that kind of situation. And that's how I've ended unhappiness for good. <laughs> because, it's so much fun. <laughs> well, it's becoming that, that, that place where, where you, the belief is bigger than, and your focus on that happiness and all those other things that are coming at you, like these questions and everything else, you're not like, well, I've heard those questions. I've heard. I've even felt them in my body. I don't. I don't go there in my thoughts. I, I've processed all that stuff. I know so, what it's about. Right. So the power is in, even though you hear them as the words, but they are not. You don't have a feeling attached to them, so it trips you up right away and goes, ah, oh. you know. Exactly. So you're not hit, hitting that negative button. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when, when, I, when I knew what I was doing was working, I ha- was living uh, with uh, three teenagers, three cats, a dog, and a wife who didn't believe in what I was doing. <laughs> one, day, one day, the teenagers were trying to push my buttons and make me angry. Mm-hmm. And it came up as humor instead of anger. <laughs> and I thought it's working. <laughs> now that is freaking bizarre. <laughs> I was on the right track. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is bizarre. When they're sitting there chastising you, and you turn yeah, it around into all humor. the fingers are pointing at me. Blah 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 blah, and I'm laughing like crazy. <laughs> Why am I laughing? Because I see the truth of it. I understand that all complaint is about the complainer. So, so there's That's no... That's true, though. I mean, it is about the complainer. It is. It is. <laughs> all complaint is about the complainer. Because you can only thing that can come out of us is what's inside us. So if you want to squeeze it, your orange juice out of an orange... Don't 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 squeeze try an apple. Don't squeeze an apple. <laughs> you want an orange juice? Squeeze an orange. I mean, I I love complaint. you, other two guys, but you know, I've listened to him a long time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, I'm, and I, every once in a while, I go to this apple and think I'm going to get orange juice out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Not possible. <laughs> 
Okay, so uh, here we go. Here, here we go. Here's a great point from uh, Megan. It's okay. We have to be accountable. We're not perfect. We transgress sometimes. Absolutely, because to be human, to err is human, right? So mm -hmm. then we make mistakes, and what are mistakes for? Mistakes are for learning new ways of being. Yep. So we, then we continue on our new ways of being, and then we get better and better. Do we still make mistakes? Yes, we still make mistakes. But we keep on getting better and better and better. <laughs> is that why we came down to Earth to to live this human experience? I believe that's yes. true, yeah. Yes. I believe we came to Earth to learn to love ourselves and to um, carry out our purpose to, her, to help the world. All right. Beautiful. I think that's what we're here. <laughs> and I and I see and I can tell you none of that is easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking it's simple, but you know, hey, yeah, you know, that, that leads us to universal uh -oh. truth of happiness. Happiness is happy. Yes. <laughs> I, it better be. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Happiness is happy. Right, <laughs> because, yeah. The I mean, of profundity okay. here today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's 307, people. It's so much fun, but I think I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just recap here uh, for a second. If all we are is mind, heart, body, and soul, and that encapsulates us, then how does it work? Now, I think it works so that the mind begins with an idea. Is it going to be a new idea of the greater me or an old idea of the lesser me? And that idea is going to drive a feeling inside of me. And when that feeling inside of me starts to arise, it's going to generate either action in the body or inaction in the body, productive action or destructive action. And so when we do that, we can be powered by fear or love. And if we're powered by love, then we are uncovering and expressing our soul's desire. Mm. And everything is going to go better and better and better. Mm -hmm. And if we decide to take inaction or destructive action, then we are putting another layer on top of our soul. And there will come a day that we will regret that. Wow. Oh, let yes, today. Yes, yes. <laughs> let today be the day to embrace expressing your true self. <laughs> Blinky, I just love you. I, I just love you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you all. <laughs> we are having such fun. I mean, I'm really happy that everybody came today. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure, and I hope to see you on Monday. We'll be talking about the power of happiness. It's going to be great. Yes. And I look forward to seeing you all. Let's laugh out. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you for today. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. I'm Robert Allen McRae. <laughs> Jeremy, <laughs> thanks, you guys. Thanks, Jeremy. Bye. Thanks, Linky, for being bye here. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Bye. <laughs>